Welcome back, Foulmouth Fishing. Um, I've seen a lot of people do these, so I figured why the heck not, I'll throw it together. Uh, I'm going to do a real short one. I'm not going to get in-depth, but uh, a lot of people are out there showing what kind of tackles they use. And going into the spring season, um, I figured I'd crack open one of my bags. I've got a couple, uh, a lot <laughs> of tackle. But uh, I figured I'd start, I'd grab a bag, take this one here, and uh, just show you some of the things that I use. Um, this one here is probably is my crank crank bag, so it's not going to be really top water stuff. Um, it's a little early for that now because it's just spring. You're going to start seeing a lot of the a lot of the fish going to uh, going to um, you know bed up. They're going to feed real quick, get fat, go into their their spawn, and then the post spawn. Then I'd be going for more of uh, you know different baits, but. Uh, <clears throat> This one here, I like these. These are old Gander Ma Mountain. I don't even know if the if the stores are even open. I think they're all out of business now. But uh, I got three of these uh, Gander Mountain bags, uh, tackle bags. Plenty of pockets. Um, so we'll just get into this. It's going to be pretty lengthy. This is probably going to be like 35, 40 minutes long. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I'm not going to talk about individual brands of baits, but I'll just show you basically the styles, profiles, and things that I fish with. So in each one of my tackle bags, every single one has got a multi-tool. Um, just easy enough to change out hooks, do what I have to do, repair lures. Um, I like this one uh, here in particular because it's got a little file, a little rasp, so if I have to sharpen up a hook, um, I've got that on the side there. Of course, it's got screwdrivers, flat head, Phillips, everybody knows that. Um, but they come in handy. I keep that one on the side there. Uh, these side pouches. Um, spare leader line. If I'm rigging a drop shot or something and I want to do some leader, or I want to run braid on my main line and I need fluoro or mono, I tend to keep a spool or two of different weights of uh, leaders. Um, some braid if I need to make a leader because they're they're biting me off or I'm getting hung up on things. Um, just different lines. There's some Berkeley Trilene. Nothing special. Nothing nothing major. Like I said, I'm not going to get too in depth because that's very boring. There's some more suffix. Um, this is eight pound, and I probably have a six pound. Yeah, there's a six pound suffix and an eight pound. Again, just to change up the diameter of line that I'm fishing. So uh, you know to make a little leader or what have you. All right, these have two pockets, one front, one back, and the main co compartment in the middle. Um, I like this front park, uh, pocket particularly. Um, it works out, it's got, uh, it's got benefits, I'll show you in a sec. So I got this little itty bitty box here with some finesse worms, smaller Senko style stuff. Um, little finesse purple and pink flake, uh, green pumpkin red flake. Tiny finesse worm, um, dark color, dark, dark, rich green, blackish blue with green and red flake in that one. Some smaller, thinner profile if I'm getting a little smaller bait. Some of these things are, uh, you know, mystery tackle box finds. Like uh, this is a Catch Co. mystery tackle box product, a little flat, looks a lot like a blood worm. I like throwing that. I got that on a little jig head for some small finesse work. If I need to throw that. Carolina uh, beads a weight just for in case. I like this front pouch specifically for this trick. The pouch folds down and makes this little platform. Um, so if I need to rig something up or I have trash that I want to get rid of uh, while I'm sitting out on the bank or sitting on the boat or kayak, I can just throw my trash on there at the end of the day. I can zip it up, take my garbage with me so I'm not littering uh, around where I fish, which is kind of very important to me to keep the, the areas where I fish clean and tidy. It also has some storage. Uh, some of the other boxes that I have have tools in here, you know, forceps and uh, pliers, etc. Um, line cutters, what have you. That's that side. Flip it around here. On the back pouch of this one, uh, I have some small lures, spoons, a series of different series of different colored spoons. There's a purple, blue, there's a red and white. Got an orange with black spots. A nice red and white one there. Just some standard spoons. They always catch fish. Old, 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 old oldie but a goodie. There's a Shakespeare. Um, 
some hair jigs, smaller hair jigs. Again, uh, I try to set these boxes up so that I'm not just fishing large baits out of a box. I have th uh, go-tos, so if the big fish aren't catching, I can uh, switch over, throw some smaller finessey things. Honeybee jig. Um, and, you know, catch some panfish if I want to. So I don't waste a day out on the, on the water. So that's that little pocket there. Nothing really amazing. Uh, in the main pouch, it's got a little zipper pack. Um, there's the arm, uh, arm strap that I don't have on this particular one. I just hand carry this one by the two handles. Uh, a little 50 pound Seaguar. There's for my, for my bigger reels. I have the starts of a little Dink Cinco. So these are a little small. The real deals. Little real deals from uh, Z-Man, that last tech. Small little ones, got a little white, white silver flake for uh, for good water, depending on the water color. Here's a green pumpkin, there's that red gold flake. Uh, this one's a little bit larger, it's the green pumpkin red flake with a purple back. I got my tube box that I've been working on setting up. Different style tubes, again, um, those earplugs, if you have seen my other video, you know why I keep a set of earplugs in my tube boxes. Um, also the gel, scent and enhancers, bait and attractants, um, some pegs just in case I want to rig it a different way. I got some bullet weights, standard little different variety shape sizes of bullet weights, random assortment of hooks and jig heads, offset worm hooks, small jig heads, tube jigs, and of course, a variety of different colored individual jigs from the black, blue, white, green pumpkin, black flake, green pumpkin, red flake. Uh, nice little orange guy there. There's that. That's the tube box. Uh, back to Senkos. So these are the larger Senkos. Uh, also, I have my Dippet. In here, that's that garlic scent. I like, especially with things like um, these plasma tails. Um, There's a green pumpkin with the, the chartreuse plasma tail. I like to even dip this in the dip it, add that garlic scent, um, rig that, and uh, you know, on either on a worm, uh, Texas rigged or Carolina rigged, or or uh, throw it out wacky style. It doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. But that little dip flavor uh, and scent of garlic does attract, helps you out. Got a Another green pumpkin Senko. Standard Senkos, black, black, blue. There's a little lighter blue. Uh, and in here I also keep my wacky rings and my wacky rig tool. Already set up. If you don't have one of these, these are a great investment to save your uh, save longevity on your on your uh, worms, on your Senkos. Um, this way you're not tearing them out when the hook gets uh, Go straight through the Senko, you end up with the possibility of tearing up your, your Senkos really quick. Those, uh, those wacky rig tools definitely help out. Here's my fluke box, slowly but surely. I've got to re-up on a lot of different flukes, but um, I basically have different colors of flukes. Uh, silver blue fleck, silver belly, and that blue top that catches. Here's a like a ox blood with a whole series of greenish blue flake in it. That one works well. Of course, you have to have your standard minnow shiner, white belly, silver, silver back color. I got that also in this little diamond tail as well as that paddle tail. Uh, red flake on like a chartreuse greenish color. That's an oldie but a goodie. Um, some Z-Mans here, Laztec. It's that amberish green like it's a green pumpkin with a, a yellow or gold fleck in it but it gives you this this green profile that's a little bit different with that clear uh, crystalline belly that works well and my specialty that I keep in here not because it's a fluke or anything but it's kind of it holds it out of the way and I know to go to that but these are JDM product and these things catch fish big time there's so much action on this no matter what you're rigging it on with all of those appendages and tails and things flicking around this thing startles the hell out of bass 
to get both a reaction bite and if you know that um, the bass are going after things like cicadia or, uh, or worms or any kind of insect, this thing with all these tentacles um, just falls into that prey category very well to mimic that, that hatch. Um, I've, I've had great success on that. So, uh, Next box in the bag is my creature baits here. So these are all... I consider these beaver baits, even though some call them craws. They're kind of a conglomerate. Um, craw baits, to me, always have individual claws, like realistic pincer claw perspectives. But this, I always call a beaver because even though they, they're supposed to mimic a claw, uh, craw, it's still a beaver tail bait. Um, so I just label them creatures, but you got your, your blue back with the green pumpkin stomach. Um, again, same thing, green on the back, blue, and here's a green pumpkin with a green fleck. Here's a orange on the back, or on the, on the belly with a, uh, like a, I don't know, like a root beer coffee color, deeper, richer brown kind of back. This is another good color that works for me. This is a green pumpkin with a copper flake that sets off a lot of flash up against, um, underwater vegetation that catches them. Everybody always has to have that typical green pumpkin, red flake, crawfish color tone. Um, another good color. Dark blue with a blue flake. That's another good go-to. Lots of shimmer on that one. And green with a uh, green flake inside. So, um, just typical crawfish slash beaver baits, like I say. Another creature, these are what I call my creature craw box. This is my actual, I refer to as my craw baits um, because they are literally crawfish color, a crawfish uh, shape. So I've got these, these are great with a uh, nail weight, Ned rigged, Rico, uh, Nico rigged, um, thrown on a drop shot. These things work amazing because their body is so long. These also work really well as trailers on a jig head. So I got these here, <clears throat> and I got two sizes of these. Here's the full length, um, this is a three inch. It's just a green pumpkin, red flake crawl. And then I got the smaller version. Same thing, they just bend the tail, it's a little shorter profile. So if the fish, if the small mouth are biting, not the big mouth, large mouth will go for the larger one, small mouth I'll throw for this, depending on what I'm shooting for. Not that it really makes a difference, they'll bite either one, but just mental preference. <laughs> this one catches a lot too. This is a green pumpkin black fleck with that bright chartreuse claw. Um, these work awesome as trailers. They do, you can rig them. They do have a, a predominantly thick uh, tail appendage. So you can run a hook through there and drop shot these. I'm also interested in running one of these in a Tokyo rig because I can hook that through there and see it fish. Cause these, these, um, Claws do hold air, so they do float. So that's a good one. Um, here's a purple with a, like a green belly. Um, eh, purple with blue flake and a green belly. That works out too. Here's the same thing without that green. Different brand. More of that. Again, this is a, a hollow body. Holds air, so it, it floats. Um, all depends on what kind of water column presentation you're looking for. Um, I got these little guys here. Again, for a little N Ned Rigs. On a stand-up jig head, shaky head, I use this. Um, it's another Laztec product. It's a TRD, the real deal. It's their crawl. Um, there's some oddballs in here. This one works real. This should probably be better off in my uh, in my tube box, but I keep it in here just in case, just to throw. Again, green pumpkin, black flake. There's another Laztec product from Z-Man. Um, yep. So that's that, standard crawls, and then last creature baits, these are my piece de resistance, my brush hogs, I'll oh, see these have to go in there, so these are going to come out of this box and go in my craw box, here's another Z-Man Elastec craw, this is that silver back and the uh, green pumpkin top, but that's that Elastec material, I'll do that right now, so don't forget, you guys go over here. I gotta open that. I'm gonna have to buy some more brush hogs. Alright, I got uh, in here 
is a couple more beaver style baits. Um, green pumpkin black flake. Uh, another like craw beetle uh, green pumpkin. Same paddle. These work great as, as trailers too because these um, appendages, these paddles, kick like crazy. They work really good on a, on a, um, on a jig head. I don't work these on a jig head on the, ver on the uh, horizontal. I actually work them vertically so that this paddles like an actual fish's tail rather than kicking like a frog's feet. But I've also um, hooked these weightless and thrown these um, to mimic frogs because of the way those paddle feet work. Um, oddball colors that you never know, depending on wa water clarity, you might want a little shimmer and shine. If the water's real crystal blue, I like to go with a, a light off green, like a, um, a sea green, sea foam kind of color. It seems to work for me. That's just, just me. Um, I love these guys. Mystery Tackle Box. That was a good hookup. I love these guys. They worked out well. That's, that's one of the few baits Mystery Tackle Box really surprised me um, in how it catches fish. So I keep those. And I've got Green Pumpkin back. Powder blue front, little craw baits, and to match the craw, I have the full size brush hog in the exact same color. So I keep these together because they're the same color, just different profiles. And I have a series of, of uh, the brush hogs, you know, same, those little things. Now, I want to say this real quick at the end of the box, something that every angler should know. I'll use this real large one because it's probably easy. Um, there's two ways to rig a brush hog. Uh, people look at this and they just throw it on a hook and they think that's ah, good to go. Just put the hook in, put it through the head, pop it out one side or the other, and they're good. But there's, there's literally two ways to rig a brush hog. So every time you pick up one of these brush hog baits, what I need you guys to, to, to think about is take your finger like it's a twig, like it's a stick or something underneath the water, a rock, and you assume your fish is on the bottom looking at it as it's, as it's being drugged by. Take the head of that bait, lay it over that finger, and run it over your finger. Now, if you look at those paddle wings, you see them closing up on one another? They're trying to cross over top of each other. That's the wrong way to rig this bait. You want the hook on the other side. You want to roll that over, and now those wings will open up. So when it hits a stump, a rock, a, a piece of twig underneath the water, it opens up and it'll expose that hook. It'll add that puff of, of, um, of, uh, of action to the, to the bait, which will have that fish turn and strike it because it's thinking that it's taking a more defensive posture. Um, so the, the fish will react and attack. So always, always take, it doesn't have to be these big ones. It can be the small ones. All of them are the same. Take that bait, lay it on your finger, before you hook it and rig it up, see which way those appendages fold. You don't want them to fold in like that. You want to rotate it over, and when you rig it, you want that hook side up so that when it, when it comes through, those wings open. So that's the right way to rig it. So when you rig it, pop that head in and make sure that that hook comes out the side that those, uh, those appendages flare open on, all right? So now you know, this is just some of my soft plastics. I got other boxes, but I really didn't want to take, um, you know, hours and hours and hours on this. And I think this has been like 3 and 15, 20 minutes. So that's long enough for one box of baits. Maybe I'll do another video uh, with my hard baits, my crank baits and everything. Uh, I don't get into brands. Oh, the other thing is I have my chunk tails. Just my little, my little chunks. I keep it simple. I get, uh, obviously, always green pumpkin for clear water, and a dark color. This one's a purple with blue uh, and green flake for dark, uh, for uh, dirty water or night fishing, that kind of thing. So uh, I wanted to keep it simple, keep it quick. But uh, So that's box number one, if you're keeping track. So these are just basic soft plastics I keep. Um, I have, obviously, a hard box bag and a top water bag, and I keep them kind of separate. Uh, and then I'm going to have a, a large tackle, so like my bigging big swing baits, my big um, glide baits and things like that, uh, that'll be in the future. So this is Foul Mouth Fishing. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, like, subscribe, and share this with your friends, share this with your family, share this with your coworkers, share, share, share along social media. Uh, again, we're working our way towards those goals for those giveaways. 
Uh, I have lots to give away, and, and obviously I'm in no short supply of, uh, of things that I like to buy. So I can certainly, uh, if you guys like any of these things, or you want a more in-depth discussion of any of these kinds of things, um, feel free to comment in the section below and uh, give me your opinion on, on things. Uh, so I hope this has been entertaining or at least educational. I just figured I'd throw this one together. I'll throw in the others later on and uh, just share a little personal, uh, you know, tackle supply of what I got. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Foulmouth Fishing. Uh, tight lines. Take care.